there are more things to learn than ever. And how could any of us keep up? These days, it's just like, oh. So the other day I put out a tweet asking people their thoughts about grid and David Kearns tweeted something back that I found really interesting and I thought I would turn it into a viewer question. Uh, he was saying that one of the things that sort of is a fear around le learning grid is that things will change, that somehow either the spec will change or the browsers will change or our idea of how to use grid will change, the best practices will change, or I think especially that somehow the tool itself will change. and. Any time that he or others might put into learning grid right now might be, it might be too soon. You might have to relearn it or it might go away or like why bother to spend all that time learning it. I get it. I feel like we're in a time right now where there are more things to learn than ever. And every week there's some hot new must learn thing everybody's talking about. And how could any of us keep up with learning every single one of these things. Uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, it seemed like as soon as you heard about a new tool, a new technology, you got all excited and you definitely wanted to go learn it, especially if it seemed like a lot of people were talking about it, then it would be important to go learn. But these days it's just like, oh, there's too, 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 too many. So how in the world are we supposed to keep up? Why should we invest time learning something like CSS Grid or any of the rest of the stuff I'm talking about with intrinsic web design? Don't we already have too much on our plates? It's just too much. Here's what I have to say about that. So um, I was speaking at an event apart in Seattle in April and Jeremy Keith, who is one of my favorite speakers, was there as well. And he was presenting this new talk where he separated, and it's just a, such a smart way to think about it. He separated our material from our tools for us to really not think about CSS Grid as another tool, or to think about gulp and broccoli and, but to actually understand that there are materials and there are tools. That HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the thing of which the web is made. They are the materials of the web. And things like Git, NPM, Yarn, SAS, Gulp, Grunt, Babel, Webpack, Vue, React, Ember, jQuery, Angular, Bootstrap, Foundation. These are all tools. Either they're starter kits or they're frameworks or they're build tools or they're things that help you write code faster or things that help you not repeat certain tasks over and over again. Those are tools. And you know, you could think about it like, Oh, you're going to build a house. Uh, so your tools are things like your hammer and your saw and your materials are the things like the boards that you buy or the roofing shingles that you're using and you're choosing which roofing shingles to use. They're, they're separate. So I really think that putting time into learning about new material is more valuable and makes more sense than time being put into learning a new tool. Not to say you shouldn't learn a new tool. We absolutely should learn new tools, but I kind of feel like at this point, there are so many tools. There are so many options when it comes to build tools or uh, tools for launching things, tools for uh, speeding up your workflow, tools for not repeating yourself with code, tools for getting started with a starter kit or a framework. There are just so many thousands of options out there that in a way it might be best to wait till you have a problem, a real problem, and then look for something to help you solve that problem. So you find yourself repeating yourself over and over and you go, huh, I wonder if someone has created a way to automate this so I don't repeat myself so much. Ah, that would save me a lot of time because I am spending a lot of time repeating myself in this one particular way. Instead of going out and being like, oh, there's 45 more tools for making things more efficient. I should learn all 45 of them, even though 44 of them are solving a problem I don't actually have. Like it, maybe 15 years ago we could do that, but at this point it's just too much. So, but that to me is separate from learning our material. And when there's a new thing in HTML or there's a new thing in CSS or there's some, something fundamentally changed about the way the web works, the way the network works, or the way that the things that you can do using JavaScript, that, that time is well spent learning those things, vanilla JavaScript, vanilla JS, uh, vanilla CSS, vanilla HTML, because that stuff will never change. Um, 
when something new is added to CSS, when it's actually shipped for real in CSS and put into browsers, it's there permanently. And in some ways it's kind of hard when inventing new CSS to invent CSS or change CSS or do something to the nature of CSS so that it doesn't break websites that have been around for 20 years or the way the web works because you will create a mess where things can't operate properly. So it's one of the constraints of the folks who invent new CSS to make sure that they never break pre-existing code, that they've never changed it too much. So any code you write today is going to run in 10 years. Any code you write today is going to still work. Ideally, I think it's going to work in a hundred years. I really believe that the time spent learning CSS grid or other new CSS technologies is time well spent. And that if any of us needs to kind of cut back on the overwhelm to definitely cut back on the tools and don't cut back on the material, learning about the medium, learning about the material itself. Um, the other question that David had really was about, he said um, something in a later tweet about, um, well, what about Flexbox? Like there was a moment, there have been instances where people have put time and energy into learning something like Flexbox only to later have it be changed or that the earlier understanding was a mistake or that things are not what they were when it was first invented. Um, that is true. That has happened, especially Flexbox is a very good example where the CSS working group, group wrote a draft for Flexbox and put everything behind prefixes and then changed the spec and changed what the prefixes did and then changed the spec again and eventually came up with the final draft, the final version, the final version, not even a draft. And that is what shipped in browsers. But the reason that things were changing is because of the way the CSS working group thought about the invention of CSS and this thing where we had vendor prefixes. And the whole plan with the vendor prefixes is that the code would keep changing, but web developers, web designers were not supposed to use it. I didn't know this. I used web prefixes all the time, but there was this idea that we weren't supposed to use it yet because it wasn't baked. Turns out that that didn't really, that system didn't really work very well. And so now we're getting rid of vendor prefixes. Um, now nothing is coming out with a vendor prefix and everything is being put into the browser and changed in, made different and different ideas about how the specs work are discussed. And it might take years for a new thing to get worked out all the details, but in all of those years, it's not actually in the browsers in such a way that we can put it on our websites because our users don't have it. Um, everything is behind a flag. So grid did that for five years. Grid changed multiple times over five years, but that happened between 2012 and 2017. So we didn't know it. We were not, uh, people, uh, web developers, web designers were not actually using Grid. We were not writing code with Grid. We were not launching websites with Grid. And all of those changes were made kind of, not in secret, but sort of in a world that we didn't even realize was happening, many of us, most of us. So once Grid finally did hit browsers, once it finally did ship, it shipped finished. Unlike Flexbox, it shipped finished. And that's the principle that every browser maker is using going forward. No one is using vendor prefixes anymore. Everybody's waiting until the spec is really, really finished. It's behind a flag. And if you want to test it out, you can use a browser like Firefox nightly and turn on flags and learn all about that and get into experimental world. But if you want to stay in the real world where your users have these things in their browsers, it won't show up until it's done. So once it has shown up and once it is ready to go, it really is ready to go. And so grid may change. It may evolve. There are several things, many things that people would like to add to it. I hope that we do add a lot of those ideas to grid, but the things that exist right now, if you learn grid level one, that time spent will be well spent because that code, that way of working, that mental model is not going to change for the rest of our lives. It's going to be for better or worse. We're stuck with it. It's going to stay the way that it is now. So go for it. Learn grid. Um, we don't really know what the best practices are. And of course we'll discuss best practices and we'll debate whether or not we should write our code this way or write our code that way. And we may decide to change our techniques or just change the way we use it. Or we may um, come up with new ideas and, you know, 10 years from now we might use grid in a, in a way that's different than our first thoughts of how to use it today. But grid itself, the technology of grid, the syntax and what each thing does is not going to change. So, don't worry. It's cool. It's time to learn it. It's been out for well over a year now and, uh, 
it's it's why not let's go 